It's the Solo One Sci-Fi Podcast. Hello, welcome to this week's podcast. And, well, it's what? a bit of a... What well, there ain't really, <laughs> well, well, James, there, there ain't really much to report on this week, but we do have some things to cover. We so, over in the far corner, my co-host, Michael Ball, a.k.a. Coakland, <coughs> and check out his YouTube channel, which is very good. And I'm by the gods of science fiction. Don't hail me. It's okay. I'm humble. And uh, check out my channel and enjoy the podcast. Oh, thank you. That's a very nice introduction, introduction rather. And likewise, um, by the gods of science fiction, check out your channel. All sorts of stuff you're featuring. You're featuring old shows and and um, these hidden gems, some of which I'm still not uh, encountered yet. So um, I'd be interested to see how some of these shows. How are your um, what are your subscribers saying about some of your shows? Are they interested in your um, in the stuff that you're putting on there? What they uh, saying? Yeah, about it? yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them big thanks because a lot of it we forgot about. Yeah, this is what I like about your channel. Uh, I'm a little bit more sort of in sci-fi, a bit more well-known stuff. So you know, yeah. occasionally I, t- I like to sort of throw a show on with something just, I've never heard about. So there we well, go. When I got in this morning, I started uploading a uh, Final Conflict. Oh, okay. That's good. It's never made any sense, did that to me. And I, I, it's, I, it was a stupid. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, it's, I, I, I don't think they knew where they were going with it all. It started off well, and then somewhere it, it just got ridiculous. And we reviewed that. We have reviewed that, haven't we? Earth Final Conflict. Are, are you prepared to sit through 110 episodes? Oh, no. Maybe I haven't seen that. Earth final conflict. It's Gene Roddenberry's one of them. Oh no, I've not seen that. No, I've not seen that. Do you remember when Andromeda came? Out? <laughs> yes, I did remember that. There were like uh, there were a time back in what it sort of late nineties. Gene Roddenberry had made a bit of a comeback, and there was some TV company. They uh, did a lot of uh, Canadian. They did a lot of sci-fi nineties. They got loads of series. They were quite cheap. Gene Roddenberry did the um, Quester tapes in the 70s, didn't they? Yeah, well, they oh. sort of like took some of his old scripts, like Earth Final Conflicts and Andromeda, mm. and uh, redid a thing with them. It was a bit of a thing with like it, the, the, like they dug up his old stuff, uh-huh. and some of it got made. But like, well, I like Andromeda to a point, uh, but it's. Uh, have we covered Andromeda? I've not seen it. Uh, the what, thing is, I, yeah, I mean, I know because I obviously think of him as that Hercules character, I think it was, wasn't it? And um, and there was another one, Xena, wasn't it? He was in this. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, we're all. It was the same actor. Universe, it was the same, yeah, 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 same actor. Well, he's like. Uh, What's he like? Um, is he good? Well, he's like he's like he's like Captain Kirk. It's like uh, 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 the story. The basic story is is that the forces of darkness. Uh, it's like it's a thousand years in you know, the universe. Uh, well. There's the com- the systems Commonwealth. It's like three galaxies big inside a million worlds. Okay. And it falls overnight. Okay. Because there's some force of darkness that's behind it all, and he gets sucked into a black hole for three hundred years and comes out and restores the systems Commonwealth. It was really dark in first series, and then in second series, it it, it became really cheesy, and they were like. Any problem he came into, he like he solved it because I mean, it's oh, not so, bad. so it, it reduced in quality. Are you saying as it went along? Yeah, and he has a crew of misfits, so we find in future and they all they're all like he, he he makes them see the better part of themselves. But it all comes out he's a paradigm and he's got a destiny to stop this force of evil. I mean, it's all a bit. Yeah, they, you find they try and go all cosmic with it, and and they really mess it up. Really? But it's worth I'll tell you what you should do. What's the pilot episode? Yeah, alright, okay, we'll give it a go. And... Give the pilot episode a go. Right, it's an hour and a half. It, it's the first two episodes, it's like a pilot movie. It will, the first season will have you into it, but the sack the writer, have a, a summer, and he, and they lightened it up, because it's it was really dark. Mm. And I thought, this looks interesting, but it's the same concept. Uh, a crew of misfits in a super ship fighting against the forces of evil trying to restore decency and honesty to the universe. I mean, that's what me and you do every week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's a parallel. Yes. Um, We're paradigms, yeah. 
I tell you what, I, we have re uh, reviewed the War of the Worlds generally, but I wouldn't mind at some point reviewing the 80s American version on its own. Um, with the, the Good Life Immortal, because I, I, that was a, what reminded me of what you... TV you we've no, we've done a general of all the War of the Worlds. We've right. never done a specific one of like the BBC one, the movie, the original movie. We just did a compilation of them all. I wouldn't mind at some point talking about the 1988 one which was made about the same time as The Next Generation by Paramount and how it changed. I, I like the first season. The second season completely went a different direction. That's what <laughs> reminded me of what you said. Don't doubt me on about the second season. No, I know. But I wouldn't mind talking about that because I, I think that's Yeah, no, all right. Yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah. yeah. All but right. Well, yeah, we'll do I'll that next see. week, all right? And then we'll, we'll do some, well, I'll check out your pilot. Um, I also want to check out a film which um, apparently yep. was huge when it came out. It's a TV movie called The Day After from 1983. Oh, not in America. It gives me nightmares, that. I've never seen it. I'm going to check it out. So, well, you yeah. mean about the atomic war? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, but apparently, God, it was huge when it, it came it out. Me. Well, it freaked me out. I saw that as a kid. It's, like the, um, it's the, like the British version of. What's the one? Threads. The Threads, yeah. It's like the, it's yeah, like the American yeah. version of Threads. So, um, you, do you recommend checking it out? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. Is it on YouTube then? Is, is it uh, it, it's, it, it's magically appearing on my screen. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Right, it's magically appearing on your screen. That's fair enough. And, uh, well, well, I'm going to tell there is another War of the Worlds movie. Oh, um... Not, not the two made for DVD. I know it's not them two shit ones, but... Mm. Where they're, they're, they're just fucking ridiculous. Them, them. I mean, I bought them in a pub off some dodgy person. Right. Copy many years ago, you don't see these people selling DVDs. No, anymore. they just they just they disappeared now. They just yeah, disappeared, yeah. yeah. But I bought uh, uh, one of the movies. There was actually one made by the uh, the society. Who wrote it? Who was the writer? The original writer was H.G. Wells, wasn't it? H.G. Well, well, there's the H.G. Wells. They actually financed the movie set in the Victorian times. <laughs> I I've heard of it. I've heard it's very very low. It's a very low production. It. Apparently, it's a yeah, very low yeah. production. Um, it was made. <coughs> if I remember correctly, it was made a similar time to the Tom Cruise one in about the mid two thousands. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember time, it was yeah. like a parallel. And I remember that although it had very low productions uh, production <laughs> in it, it apparently was the closest ever adaption of the original books yes, it was. It in, was, yeah. uh, in visual yeah. form. Um, obviously, you've got the uh, Jeff Wayne's musical version, which I adore, as you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, all the um, TV and movie versions have skewed quite a long way away from the original book. And it's and this is why, um, obviously, if we review the 88 version, that's completely away from the, the H.T. Wells version. But I still... This will be an interesting question next week, whether the AG8 version, which is completely different, based on the 1953 movie, is better than the BBC adaption about three or four years ago, which was supposed to be closer to the original book. So we'll talk about that next week. Let's do that. I'd love to review that. That'd be a really interesting one. I'd love to do right. that. But, um, yeah, I'd like to... Um, I'll have a look so, at so, that. So, what, so, like, we're going to do World at World TV show next week. If that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, no, that's fine. A week Cause... after, you're going to watch the pilot episode to Andromeda. We could do a show uh, based uh, on the pilot only. Yeah, let's do, and see. I think well, that's right, and, then, and then we could go, and then we could discuss it. If and you, you watch give... a few extra episodes, you think, this might be worth giving a look. Then yeah, all right, okay. We'll go, all right. Yeah. Let's, let's, Andromeda, let's... Kev Sabo, yeah. All right, so Two we'll weeks. do that in the next couple of weeks. All right, okay, that's still. If you do mine next week, I'll do yours week out. That's fine. Yeah, Brilliant. definitely. Um, so, should we go into, there's not much, but we'll go into a quick bit of Solo One Sci Fi news, okay? There's not much. Here we go. All right, so the only thing um, I've seen, and Martin talked about this before we started recording, was um, apparently Doctor Who is doing some sort of uh, something to do with the Beatles, where there's been a, quite a lot of footage uh, or filming around. And it's not the real Abbey Road, but they've made a road to make it look like Abbey Road, obviously from the famous Beatles album cover where they walk across the Zebra Crossing. Um, and also, um, Shooty Gut was, seems to be dressed up in quite a lot of different outfits at the moment. So I wonder whether this is going to be a Doctor that doesn't have a traditional standard or one or two variants of the same clothing. What do you think, Martin? I'm sat on the fence. Me too. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I have had, a, I've, I've massively fallen out with the BBC. I've never forgiven them for what they did. 
Yeah, what you mean in recent Doctor Who, you mean, or just generally? Well, in recent Doctor Who, but they sunk it with me with War of the Worlds. That's, yeah, when that's me, why I was the asking the general that's thing. When that, that's when me and them finished. And after last, well, apart from the power of the Doctor, mm. the, I'd just been the last three seasons down the toilet for me. Yeah. And it's well, got, I... like I said, it's got nothing to do with her before anybody kicks out. It, 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 the writing was abysmal. Mm, I agree. Even the specials were terrible. The Sea Devils. That so, was really panned by everybody. Everybody hated that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you quite liked the Groundhog Day one. Which is the yeah, one. that is one of the better ones. Yeah, it was. I mean, there was one or two little gems in there, but not enough to to defend the entire three seasons. Yeah, but I is that, a, is, that the, is that the BBC or is that Chris Chibnall that? It's the BBC for a long Well, the BBC have a lot to answer for. I mean, you know, I, when I first saw the clip of the Martian Walker, I was so excited. Mm. And and then I we, we did a weekly show after each episode. It was right it, when we first started doing the show. Right? Yeah, we every week we did a live show. Episode kind of three. Thing. Episode three was when we did the general War of the Worlds of the all the ver and next week we're gonna do just one version of it. But um yeah, it was very interesting how um we watched it, and it was—I think it's only three parts or something. It wasn't very long. Yeah. And we were like, we we talked to each other. We didn't even, even know each other that well at that time, and we were both like, "What the beep was this?" You know. Yeah, it, no, it no, was, it was. It, well, it I was, remember like there were no point doing any. There, there were no point doing a live stream of it because. Yeah, that's right. We were talking it, about it was doing so that. bad that we just both sat there, thinking, "Have I just wasted an hour of my life?" Yeah, that? yeah. Well, basically, had. <laughs> and then we got to the final episode. So, so I'm I'm up. To, I, I'm trying to be optimistic with the new Doctor. I'm trying. He's a new dude. I don't know anything about no, him. No, I don't I know, know anything about him either. He's got some series on Netflix. I've seen yeah, clips which is of it. Big. Yep. A oh, friend yeah. of mine said he's very funny, and uh, that's it. I don't really know. Really yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been hearing the stuff which I think is going to be very ticking boxes. But I mean, I will go into it. Expecting, uh, I'm going to go with it into it with low um, anticipation of how it's going to be. I'm not going to get my hopes up because, you know, with so many things where we've really built up and we've been let down. If you go in with like, okay, let's see how it goes, and it's better than we think. Prime example is obviously the re reversal with Star Trek, where we went in with Picard season three, thinking, oh, it's going to be all right, and it blew us away, and then we went into the Mandalorian season three, and it was like. No, it was disappointing. We didn't dislike it. We talked about it last week, but it wasn't quite what we think. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, uh, we both were watching it. I mean, because you asked me the other week, you thought, I said, are you going to be giving up on watching Doctor Who? I can't. I can't give up watching this series. Well, no, it's, it's, like, it, it's like, well, I've been watching <laughs> Discovery Season 5, of course. I will. It, oh. it's, it's, I, I, it's, I will be watching it because I need to know. Yeah, I, I'm interested Because how the may say, there's always that 1% chance you're going to get surprised. Maybe Doctor Who could be awesome. Maybe, you know, we could be sat here next year going, that was the best episode I've ever seen. Somehow I doubt it, but mm. there is that hope of that. You and know. if I remember next year, we'll give ourselves a replay. Do you remember that podcast we did in May 2023? <laughs> yes, yeah. And we were, uh, yeah, and it, we've done this before, but we've actually been made out to be completely wrong. So it's not mm -hmm. always the case that we actually are, are right about stuff. But we do know a thing about what flags us as potentially being a bad idea or not looking good and yeah. also explain now we do know our stuff and we tend to be quite like-minded in most stuff we watch apart I, from, I, think, I think we're both coming apart from apart from um, apart from Batman versus um, Superman which, which I don't like that I know I can stay I saw Guardians of the Galaxy okay no I've not no spoilers was it any good well, I, it appeared magically. Oh, like, okay. Well, wherever it, it appeared... It, it was a version where you're in the cinema with other people. Oh, so you get like <laughs> someone's head walking by or something like that. <laughs> Wasn't a bad guy. Was it, it still, what, is it still watchable though, right? Oh, yeah, it was very watchable. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. A lot of people said it was good. But, I mean, it's... Uh, I would not and out with it, really. One, I don't... Maybe because I saw it on a, I, I, I don't know, maybe, but I, maybe I should have gone to the cinema. It, it, it's quite emotional, but I don't know. It, it didn't seem to have the edge at last two for me. Okay. But 
I, I'm going to wait until it comes out. Yeah, you can't you know. watch it without with mono and it's, it's bad contrast. Yeah, 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 yeah we're all right. <laughs> I can't we're watch right. stuff like that. No, hey, we're all right. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> I, I mean, I, uh, I thought the villain, what they did, I, the villain was a disappointment because the villain they used is is so much more in the comic, and he would a bit. I don't know. He, he would a bit ridiculous in this. For the level of villain, you know what I mean, and that's all I'm going to say. But you might enjoy it. I mean, yeah, the, the sound. I like the, the Guardians the musicals, of the Galaxy. Guards, guards. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, like I said, you're much more of a connoisseur of Marvel than I am. But most people generally oh, are saying, know. well, most I people don't are saying that. Anymore. I'm starting to give up on Marvel. That's, that's what I was about to say. Apparently, a lot of people are saying that Marvel are really starting to lose the plot, kind of thing. So it's. Uh, I, I mean, I, I couldn't stand that. I, I watched three episodes of that female Incredible Hulk thing. And I know you quite like that. I just thought that was the biggest pile of shite I've seen ever. That I, I could I could watch it. I couldn't watch it. I thought it was absolutely. I absolute quite liked it. I, 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 it. Did. I could get. I could. Stand I don't it. know why. I just thought it was. No, funny. that's all right. I mean, like I said, I like the original. But, I, but Marvel, it so, is you know. Marvel. Marvel. Marvel are losing the way. I. I. I, I, it's, I a lot of the quality characters have gone now. Is it franchise fatigue again? Because there's so much been going it's, on in the universe. Well, or is it, it writing? It's, well, it, it it's a bit of both, really, because it's like the the the, the people they're putting into the films now, they don't really start. It's like like we've had the big guns, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like Iron Man, Thor, Spider Man, Captain America, the Avengers. Mm. All that's that were great. It went somewhere to Endgame, but now it's Ant Man. Uh, it, it, I mean, uh, the eternal. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, the uh, uh, Wakanda Forever was just absolutely terrible. It, it, it's a sit through three oh, hours. Oh, is it bad? Is it really bad? Okay. It's that bad. It's yeah. bad. They spent hundreds of millions on it. I, I've actually not seen the last few. I haven't seen Eternals. Uh, the best, the best Marvel film was Spider Man, where he met the other two Spider Man. Uh, yeah, yeah, multi. I saw that. I think that's the most recent one I've seen. I yeah, enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was pretty very clever. good. Yeah, that was uh, quite I watched clever. that Ten Rings, Shang Chi and the Ten Rings. That's, it was like, are you kidding me? Really? It, I don't know. It, it's like it's going. It's gone off in this other direction from where they were going. I know where they're meant to be. The they're trying to get all cosmic now, and I, well, I some, don't know. It's some people are working. saying that about the Star Wars um, franchise at the moment, because um, obviously when the Mandalorian came on after the Rise of Skywalker, everybody really liked that, and everybody hate panned the Rise of Skywalker, and now um, you know a lot of people are singing the praises of Andor. I I I, I still can't get into it. I keep, I tried again the other night, and I fell asleep again. I watched. I can't. I don't know what it is. I can't, and it was so. It was the I episode. Was, I saw Cyril with the milk again with the mother again, and I fell asleep. And I woke up. It was an hour later. I, just, I, I can't watch it. I, 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 tried, I tried. I want I, to I, like I, it. I want to like it. I can't I stand can't. his character. I just can't stand him. Oh, I, I just don't know what it is. I just. I just. He's meant to be this big rebellion force, and it's just it don't make it just. I think Rogue One did it for me with him. Rogue One is spectacular. It's. But it just doesn't do it. I mean, and it's just. It, I will watch season two, of course. Yeah, because, yeah, me too. We'll, we'll review you know, it as well. But it, but it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it, it, you want something to get your teeth in, Sam? We're gonna recommend I thought, wait, something. I, oh, go on then. Go on. What, what do you recommend? I, I recommend down. Get hold of uh, Doom Patrol season one. It's Twelve episodes. Oh, okay. And it, it it's based on this. Well, it's sort of like superhero, but not super. It's just, it's so f weird. I mean, they have to go up a donkey's ass to get into another dimension. You told me about this before. And I honestly, you a lot told of me people about have gone on about it. I, I, I took me a while to get into it. And I bought the first season and I watched it. I couldn't turn it off. Oh, now, how many seasons are there again? There's, it's just finished now. They finished it on four seasons. Final four seasons, seasons oh, okay. running now. Okay. So, yeah, so you've got three seasons you can sit through. Okay. I do recommend it because you're going to sit there and go, have I just watched this? I, I don't want to spoil it for you, but the cast is Timothy Dalton, Brendan Fraser. I mean, it's an A-list cast. So it's got some big, big names. Hollywood. Okay. Massive names. All right. You know, I, I do recommend the first season. 
All right, sounds good. Brilliant. Okay. Oh, oh, that's that's pretty good. I think that's pretty much it for news. Um, so I think um, shall we go into our folks of the week? Oh, uh, one thing, section oh, thirty-one. I yeah. saw some. I did. I didn't watch the video. I saw it. Uh, Jay put up a video about section thirty-one or something. Did you watch it? I've seen some of his. Stuff. I don't think I've seen the section thirty. Oh, no, I saw something about. No, I can't remember. Yeah, what, what did what he say? Something? I didn't watch it, I just wondered if you'd watched it, because I keep forgetting to watch it. I'm going to go back to it today. I yeah, think it's I, happening. I saw, um, I saw some, one of the, the actor. You remember the actor in Discovery? Oh, no, was... no, that one. No, not that. Stargate, apparently. Oh, James Stargate. This, oh, sorry. That's yeah, that. James, yeah JPEG. James Spade has been approached to come back. Yeah, I've, I've heard. What's uh, going on? I've heard things, different things. I've heard some of the classic, like uh, Amanda Tapping and Michael Shanks have been approached, and then I've heard that James Spader has been approached. Obviously, the original Daniel Jackson. Um, so I know it's all going off at the moment, um, and I've even heard that Robert Carlyle's been approached as well. Uh, Do you reckon we're going to get Stargate Avengers where everybody? I wonder whether it might have started one of the old team up. Maybe Star the what about Stargate, Stargate Multiverse? It could be something. Yeah, Stargate. I'd yeah. be interested in that. I think it might be interesting. Because uh, Anubis has destroyed the ascended beings and is now all powerful. And but then we could destroyed. see the Girl Wars and Anu and Apo uh, Anubis and everything. And then we could see like the motion picture gold who are completely different. And then we could see. I don't know. I I, I might be interested in that. No, seriously, I would my checking. I'm a big fan of the gold. I think the fantastic bodies. But they were so different in the original movie. That's what I'm saying. They yeah, were. They, yeah. they weren't the parasitic beings that were in the TV no, show. So. No, no, no. <laughs> but I did love them in the TV. They're so far up their own backsides, and and it's all. It's no, the, there's no big agenda with except Anubi. The rest of them, they're just greedy beings out there. What yeah. power? Basically. That's it, and I love, that's what I liked about because they kept it quite simple with them. Yeah, and yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh, it's a classic series. It's one of the yeah. best. Absolutely. Well, fingers crossed we'll get some more news soon. And yes. Uh, yes. something to look forward to. We'll be doing lots of talk topics about that. I really want to focus on that because it's so good. Right, let's go into this classic movie from the 80s. Let's go. Here we go. It's the Solar Sci Fi Focus of the Week. Alright, so this week we're focusing on a movie which um, was quite groundbreaking in many ways. It featured, it was one of the first films to actually predominantly feel, uh, feature CGI in a very uh, broad way. It was part of the movie. Um, it was very clever. And um, when it came out, I was at the age where I used to be in arcades playing Space Invaders, Pac uh, Galaxian, Galaga, all those wonderful 80s games. And this was right up my alley. And that was from 1982. Tron, which according to Wikipedia is a 1982 American science fiction adventure film written and directed by Steven Leisberger from a story by Leisberger and Bonnie with Birth. The film stars Jeff Bridges, a computer programmer and a video game developer who is transported inside the software world of a mainframe computer where he interacts with programs in his attempt to escape. It also stars Bruce Boxemeyer, David Warner, Sidney Morgan and Bernard Hughes. Uh, it also says Tron, along with The Last Starfighter, has the distinction of being one of the cinema's earliest films to use extensive computer-generated imagery, and it's a rare sci-fi movie created by Disney. Martin, tell me about Tron. What do you think about it? Well, well uh, just before we start on this, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I did mention this last week. Since we're on about Disney, have you watched Cat from Outer Space yet? Nope. Any good? Well, I did, you said you were going to watch it. I'm sorry. I'll get around Captain to it. Captain out of space. Well, that's, you're going to you lose points this week. I'm then. sorry, mate. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> was, it any, was it any good? Was it good? Well, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so saying, much I'm asking you. It's a bloody I'm sorry. Watch. I know. I've, I've, I've started two jobs this week, and I'm just having right, I'm, okay. I'm sorry, mate. Uh, but, I mean, yeah. I will check it. Was it any good? Did you like it? I saw it 40 years ago. I, oh, I, I've not seen the fucking why. thing since. <laughs> oh, I know. Do you know what? I'll tell you what. Okay. After this recording, send me a reminder link. Oh, okay. And, I, I, and then a place. I will forget. No, no, it's fine. I'm sorry. I will do it. I just forgot. I really apologise. No, no, I'm joking. I'm no, joking. no, but I feel bad now. I feel guilty now because I feel good, like I'm letting good, you down. Good. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just swilling, I'm sort of like sinking down into my own kind of 
That's it. I'm drowning in shame. All right, rise no, back up, up rise back up, rise back up, rise back up. Oh, you're back. Right. Thank it's you. all right. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. Right. Anyway, you? back to Tron. Go on. Yes. Back so Disney. Tron. Disney made this film uh, back in, well, it would have been 40, just 41 years ago. Um, did you see it? Was it big when you were old? Because you are slightly older than me. How did you come across it? Uh, my dad told me to see it. <laughs> Your dad was good. He told you, he takes you to see all these movies. Whenever I tell you about an old movie, your dad takes you. He was a good uh, dad. Because, because I... I divorced parents, you see. Oh, so he had more time. So I used to go fun. there the week. I went there every weekend when I met the new girlfriends. Oh. And, and so, so it I used wasn't to get, just so that. I used to get taken out. Well, it, it was either that or York Trend Museum with oh, all yeah. the other divorced dads. Oh. Do you know what I mean? And because it was free, it used to take me there all the time. And I, I didn't want to go to bloody York Trend. <laughs> <laughs> Walking around looking at some train. No, we well, he's taken me to the cinema. It's not going to say 2001, actually. I'm not happy with that. I think he said to me before he saw it, he didn't like yeah, it, he didn't yeah. know what the hell was going happy. on. I think he was expecting, like, a Star Wars thing, is it? Yeah. I think Paul Feller sat there, I thought, what the bloody hell's going on? He was like that with Tron. He, we went to see Tron. At the, I think it was at the Odeon in Leeds, and uh, we went in. Because mm. I remember he took me to see Black Hole as well. Oh yeah, I like can, that. I can that's a, not a Disney both. movie, yeah, exactly, yeah, because yeah. Disney as well. Like, I think they were out the same year over the summer, mm. and I remember they. I've always connected them two movies together. I don't know why it's just the same. Well, it was um, like my friend Malcolm Patterson. He was the one who went to talk to me about Disney movies and sci-fi. And I, I think I said to him something like, um, there's not many films which uh, from Disney which are predominantly uh, purely sci-fi. Yeah, no, that's not, what made me think of Tron. This is, this, why, this is why I wanted to feature it, because we've talked about it, but we've never featured it. So, um, Well, it, it were like, because I was a kid, it was like the first time you were coming into home computers, in a way. That's right. Because, like, you, you know, I, I, I didn't know. Nobody had a computer when that went out. But we started to see... Where the thing is with Tron, but then it it was showing you where all this was going. Tron was fifty. It was years way ahead, ahead of the game. game. Well ahead of the game. How how like the so clever. Uh, uh, Dillinger upstairs with the big computer desk. That's it. Yeah, and how yeah. he was communicating with it. Yeah. And this is like, it, like this Bill is like, Gates, wasn't he? He was like Bill Gates in yeah, the, in the yeah. Tron and, universe. Kind of and he, all of it was just set up so advanced. But to come up that there's another universe within cyberspace where the concept at that time in the 70s or very early 80s that there's I thought universe. I think it's a fascinating concept it has it's, it's a mind, but, cause it's a flawed dad, concept in many ways but it's very it's very intriguing the idea well, well, of it, some sort of sentience within programs and that they actually like almost like a life form in a digital sort of version that's very fair well yeah and it represents you when you're on the computer Yep. And the thing as well, there's uh, 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 Jeff Bridges' character at the beginning. He's trying to hack into the MCU, uh, the master program. Yep. There's that tank with him driving it. That's it. And he gets destroyed. I mean, he's hacking. I mean, they were hacking at that time. That's it. Yeah. This is right at the you beginning know, when they're already hacking. Yeah. And 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 to enter this world, he's <laughs> like, and the only way we can enter it is through VR. That's it. But you in know, some but ways. He, he, and then they have this atomizer thing that teleported him into there, which were just incredible. I mean, it took me as a kid, I was, I was a kid uh, trying to get my head around this concept word, mind blowing. Because uh, I remember my dad said to me, he said, Well, they're inside computer and they've gone down the plug. Mm. That's, that's, how he, <laughs> that's how he explained it to me, and he got it totally wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He said, well, it's like, the, you know, he, he got sucked into that plug. And, and I'm like, I think it could be a bit wrong there. I think there's another universe next to ours, which we've created through digital numbers and all. They've created this universe and all the computer games, everything. It were all connected. What's, this film was 50 years ahead of what's time. What's interesting as you describe this. It flopped this, as well. It flopped. Well, we'll talk about it in a second, but it's reminded me of a lot of films which have been uh, inspired by it. I mean, I think films like The Matrix, 
I think um, really Ready Player One is another very strong oh, contender. Great like knockoff of that film. That yeah, is. and it's a complete knockoff of Tron. And of course, Tron. I actually like Ready Player One, but there's one um, before all them. There's oh, one is there? before what's all that? them. Okay, what's that? You tell me what yeah, that is. Yeah, Lawnmower Man. Oh, well, that was obviously after Tron. That was in between. Yeah, that was yeah, made in about nineteen ninety. Yeah, that was inspired by. Tron, yes, I had thought about that link. Um, yeah, and yeah, it, it, this is it. You see, the sign of a very popular movie, well, as you just said, it didn't do well, but a very, very good idea is when you get a remake or a variation of the remake. We've already named three movies which are directly yeah. and been related. There'll be others as well. Yeah, they're the yeah. three that I could think of, we could think of. Yeah. But you're saying that Tron was a flop then, it didn't do well. I don't think it did well because I, I remember Black Hole as well. It, Disney had the one here, they bankrupt because of them two movies. They it were after Star Wars, wasn't it? They'd sort of gone into Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Wars terrified a lot of people, didn't it? Because it, they brought in all this new stuff and it was groundbreaking as well. It, nobody yeah, had seen yeah. space effects like that before. No. It's like this is fucking sounds and, and sound Sorry, effects and the but blast. this is unbelievable. Yeah. And then Tron came along and, and and well, what was it? Was it cartoon? Was it animation? But you know, at that time, I know we know what it is now, but when you're a kid, and you, you're seeing these, like, like computer, they're inside a computer, like they're not even inside a computer, they're actually inside another universe. Mm. Which we created by created. technology, through technology. Yeah, yeah, through technology. And of course, yeah. computers are intelligent, and they have ways of thinking, yeah. and it's, well, it's like we are intelligent as beings, and we think, but in this movie, they've kind of come with the association that through technology, they've created this sort of like a universe within our own technology and everything that we yeah, use. Yeah. Which again, yeah, The Matrix did exactly the same with uh, intelligent sentient robots and machines in The Matrix. Well, it's a slightly different variation, but they had a similar premise of insentient technology and something yeah. wanted to escape. And, and it, 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 there's a lot of links. I did, as we talked to, started talking about this today, I didn't really think about the fact that a lot of these films have got a lot of inspiration. I never thought until now that The Matrix was definitely must have been referenced from Tron in some ways. Well, it, 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 it's, I mean, every, every decade or so, you get, it's like, you get one movie, it defines where everything's going to go after that movie. It's like The Matrix from that But The Matrix out. did, but Tron didn't. Or did it? It did. Yeah, Tron yeah did. it did. It just took a bit... That's what I'm saying. It wasn't straight away. It took longer to it to... I mean, Matrix was a much bigger hit when it came out. Yeah, That's we did I'm get saying. a lot of stuff about life in computer games and all that cheap, nasty stuff that came out on VHS and all that. But Tron did set up a... T a Tron set up a, a, like a Mac. And, and and so much has been took from that film today. Tron, Tron is up there with 2001. Mm. It, it, it's all right, it didn't do it, it nearly bankrupt to the studio, but the, everything about that film, it, it was 50 years ahead of its time. And now it's Tron so well respected today. If a kid went to say Tron today, totally get it straight away. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's a you lot know. more... For the younger generation to watch this movie, it's so much more relatable now than it would have been if you watched it in 1982 as the same age. I mean, I mean, on the computer game, I had one of them Atari things, you know, and I'm sat there thinking... Yeah, yeah, you know, do, 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 you know, across the I had Spectrum one two eight K, and it was brilliant. Wow, yeah, was brilliant. But that's basically that was the start of the, all from that. You, you know, yeah. you sat there. I remember there were a comp. I remember going in arcade. There were a Tron game where you yeah. threw the disc. There was a Tron game. Yeah, and, and the motorbike were on there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I mean, all this is that the concepts of it were like. I don't know, Tron, it, 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 even the video arcade setup he had, it were all futuristic, it, there was just something about this film, and, and, and Dillinger and that master, what is it, the master program, that computer. Oh and yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. When it turned on him in office, he said, he, he's going, Look, well I want to go into other systems like the defence network, and, and he's going, you can't do that, because mm. we've got to move slowly, and, and it's telling him, well, I'm sure... AI, it's do. like AI, it's like, you know... Yeah, it's, and it, it's it, never, you know. it says to him, it says, look, if you don't let me do what I want, I'll expose you for ripping off Jeff Bridges' character. Yeah. You know, it blackmailed him, and he, he, he was controlling him. It was it was an AI, it was the whole thing. It was an AI, yeah. It's but in AI. Cyberverse, it was like godlike. It was. You know, it was like godlike, but absorbing all information become like omnipotent, you know, and... 
and they destroyed it. That's why I'd like to see Tron 3, where that thing's been hiding, and it comes back. Hmm? I'd like to see that return, the Master Program. I really would. It's been hiding away in the background. I mean, before we talk about the sequel, I mean, I liked some of the actors. There's a lot of sci-fi actors in, involved with this. Bruce Broxmire, obviously. David oh, Warner. You can't go ever brilliant. wrong with David Warner. I love a big... I'm so sad that he That's passed through recently. Yeah, he's a, he always makes yeah. it. He's good at whatever he does, that guy. Yeah, um, <laughs> and um, Jeff Bridges I enjoyed as well. Although uh, he's done some sci-fi, hasn't he? I think he was... Was he in a film where he was an alien on, on Earth? Jeff Starman. Bridges. Starman. That's it. See, well, as soon as I thought that... that Starman, that's a good, that's another good traditional sci-fi movie. Yeah. Um, but so let's ask you about the sequel. I mean, um, the sequel was only made about ten years ago. Jeff Bridges did return in it. Um, what do you think of the sequel? Well, I don't think the sequel did that well, did it? I, I don't think so because it, I think them. I think I heard that they were planning on doing a third one. Yeah, uh, I don't I think, think it they happened. are doing a third one. Was it done by Disney? <coughs> like, the second, like the first one? Yeah, yeah, it was done by Disney. Yeah. Okay. I thought the I thought the second one was said perfect. I like the second really one. Did. I've not seen it for a long time, but I, I thought it reflected the internet world of today beautifully. And you had a de aging Jeff Bridges as well, and he was yeah, like a program. And I, I thought, didn't have a problem with it. No, I thought they made him look amazing. You yeah, know, I did. You, you know, and I like the concept with his own program that turned against him. Yes, and, and of course and, it was Jeff Bridges' son, wasn't it? The character. The, the, yeah. yeah, and then there was these like independent. Programs that were actually created within that universe. Yeah, that's uh, they were superior to the original program. They were like, they were created up because of the environment. They were new, mm. and he he exterminated most of them. And 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 it's like they because that that Jeff Bridges character said, uh, he said if they are they will change the world in both worlds. They'll make it amazing because these like independent programs. Right. And yeah. uh, it, 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 you know, now I like the old concept where Clue wanted to conquer the user. You actually, yes, that's the right. Users, didn't they? They called his users, didn't they? That's it. And and he wanted because he had that holographic <laughs> map at Earth, and they were going to match. They were going to sort of go those, through. Yeah, that's it. The yeah. dimensional thing. Mm. Uh, that would have been interesting to have seen that. Mm. Them coming into our world because because yeah, the question was. Could they enter our world? Could they leave their own? Yes. Which again yeah. reminds me of the Matrix. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a parallel with the Matrix as well in this. And 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 I just loved it. There was something very cyber goff about the whole film, very cyber gothery, like the guy on the bar. Mm. And that I just thought it would. I, I, I'm not going to knock. I thought it would. It stood up well for a sequel. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> But I'm just disappointed that perhaps, although Tron is relatively well known, um, it really should have been bigger, I think, than it was. And I, I think that it should... What, the second one? Um, well, basically, the first one's um, sort of stamp on society, on, on being a really world-changing thing. I mean, the tr like I said, Tron is not like as big as, say, when Star Wars came out. When Star Wars came no, out... But it should have been. That's what I'm saying. It should have been, but it wasn't. Because... Tron is the first film that CGI. created the cyber world, like yes. the cyber unit, of comp you know, all that. And it, it did, but I think it was so, so... Do you think I it came know. out too early to actually get the recognition? Yeah, I do, yeah. I think, I it, think you were going to go along about saying that. I think if there's a problem, <laughs> if, if it had come out even like five years later, it might have it been might a, have bit just more, worked. Clicked a bit more... Like you said, you got us, uh, what were it, a ZX Spectrum, Me, and, and, and kids were getting sort of the computers with the tapes. And oh, you suppressed the tape, and it was sounds. Later. It was yeah. sounds, and it would actually, the computer recognised the sounds as tones, as data, and it would actually load up the game. It would take about five minutes to load a game. And it went, yeah. I really remember the tune when it used to play on my, and you used to hit um, something, shift, shift, enter or something, and it said, hit tape, and then you press play, it was real, and you could even get people. You could actually get magazines which uh, would um, uh, have cassettes with with sounds on to make programs and all sorts of things. Well, amazing I think, stuff. I think a lot of things changed. I'd, I'd say about ten years later. It's like my brother. I've got two brothers. They were kids, and they got like Nintendo game systems. For, you know, for the birthday of Christmas, and uh, they were quite high spec stuff. It wasn't like the you know game game consoles were changing. Yeah, the sure. Effects. And all that, and then my brother, I think in the nineties, he got a, he got it for Christmas. He got a PC with a CD drive. 
Right. Uh, I won't really. I I were older. I didn't really. They didn't computers. I didn't really register them. You know what I mean at the time. But it, it, I mean, if Tron had been sort of come out at that time, I think it would have been. It would have been, it would have been massive, and that's yeah, why the Matrix it, was massive, because yeah, when that came out, it was recognised, yeah. it was understood. People thought, oh, actually, because in that in your lives by that point, people did have co computers. They were yes, using. Yeah, computers. that's what but, I mean. The but back in 1982, yeah. hardly, oh. hardly anybody had it. I mean, you had no. um, the original um, Apple computers. But they were yeah, very, but very basic. Them? Who, yeah, who they were really expensive, them? and only real specialists used them. They weren't actually. It was only the mid '80s that you started. So even like, like I said, five years later, I think it might have had more recognition. If it had come out by 1999 instead of the Matrix, it would have been as big, bigger than the Matrix. I I watched an episode of The Sweeney from the 70s, right, and it was about computer theft, right? Oh yeah. Right. It, well, this episode there was some group of like this intelligent guy because it were all tapes back then you know tapes what they used to use sure yeah and Reagan said to his boss we're gonna need the, the use we know they're using it but we need to use the computer and, and boss says to him this is like 1973 he said well we can use it but it costs four thousand pound an hour to use it but he said we can't use it because we can't afford it it's four grand an hour it's for 1972 yeah. with these Big, big spools. Big yeah, spools. yeah. And, and he's spools. like, well, you know, we need to catch these. He said, yeah, but it got four grand an hour to use one of these things. And we've only got two of them. Yeah. <laughs> you see, from my perspective in science fiction, what I love <laughs> is when you get a story where it does have, it's well ahead of its time. And you can see, like we've already discussed, how ahead of its time this film was. And that's why it's so well, special. I did see it. I remember an episode that Six Million Dollar Man where he some things controlling machines and he mm. finds a co it's a computer that's alive yeah and it's sentient it, it's sent it's sort of sentient it's but it's controlling vehicles and okay no expert, he couldn't have controlled it because it needs chips and things to go inside but it just controls them but that were like the concept then that there's a computer yet again look what star trek did it didn't they they did it with the the, the, M3, the M5 computer. They have many computers which used to overload where the humanity used to confuse them and like cannot compute, yes. aren't able, you know, and they had but, a lot of time. M5 was a good example though. With yeah, the Daystrom but, computer. Daystrom. But so it would always there in the background. We knew these things like these it, computers are coming. Uh, but I didn't think we'd see these till years away. And, 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 and where we are now in all this like, like you're right you were so right when the matrix come out it was in it because it everybody recognized. got everybody got sat in that cinema and they got it and people didn't get tron it was because but it was if good tron head. had to come out instead oh okay, like i said it would have been huge tron would have been taken to the levels it should have gone to yeah tron's tron's only problem it was so far ahead of its time which surprises me it. which surprises me that the sequel to tron wasn't bigger because though when that was made, you would recognise it, and it was. I think wasn't. I have an explanation for that. Go on, but what's you, that? Can, you can say I'm wrong. No, I'll, go on, go for it. I think because we'd had uh, films like The Matrix by that time, by the time Tron Two come out, we'd had half a ton of sort of. Oh, so it's diluted the market. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think it concept was same. They go inside the Matrix, and they're going to stop them in, on that side so it didn't have the originality you mean yeah because no, the matrix no, took some of that and, yeah. and that's that that was the it's a superb movie and i think mm. it holds well as a sequel but mm -hmm. again i think the market had been saturated with so many virtual reality in the matrix type movies because mm. we've had loads of them there were that one with uh him on that actor from titanic uh he did that when he's running around in a virtual world forgot what the film's called but there were loads of them. Yeah. There were loads of films like that where you all end up in this other world and you can control it with your mind. And mm. and, and that was the same thing with Tron 2, wasn't it? it, it yeah. It, it, it offered, well, it was different, but it was still the same concept. And I think by that time, people were like, yeah, well, it's not anything different. Enthusiasm, like me and you, we were excited about it because. Mm. You know what's going it's on. It's a bit now. like how we're excited with AI now because, although we're a bit sort of like, you know, people who are on that way, they know, excited, not excited is not the right word, but we know how big it is. 
and yet you get some people like oh I don't care or whatever you know and this is why another guy, good example is like the Terminator films where they had AI and cyber cyber yeah, um, yeah, well, that sort yeah, of cyber you know, yeah. back in the similar time to when Tron was made and how in that but that was even uh, obviously Terminator was big but it wasn't that big when the first one came out it was only the sequel where it really really went mad although it was well, a huge cult movie but it's a similar premise it was something way ahead of its time there were, a film made, there were a film made in 67 or 69 Colossus the Forbin Project I've heard of it it's very good for its time but they I think it, I've it, got it I've not seen it I know of it it's worth it's worth a look and be prepared it's a long film but it's very good because this guy creates a computer and it's the size, but when they built it, it's the size of a mountain. Yeah. And then they have a complex, like where they're all on machines and computers. And the complex about eight stories. I mean, it's like the, this computer, it's like a super computer, but it's like the size of a mountain. You know, it's. Yeah. And it's over the well. You know, and at the end, it says, you know, yeah, you're dying. It's got the. How the film, but the gun when uh, size computer, is, is it? No. And, and that's why Tron got it right because there were all the programs and them new ones that got it. They were all algorithms. That's uh, that's what it is. It's like AI. It's an algorithm. It's not. Uh, it, 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 well, I, when I watched the first Terminator film, I'm, I, my imagination of Skynet was mm. somewhere inside a mountain that would just shine on, but it wasn't. It's a monitor screen. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where we are. So they got a lot of it wrong and a lot of it right, didn't they? I always find it fascinating how, um, when people predict the future in science fiction, how they often get things so wrong, but they get some elements which are right. And I think that's one of the the, the appeals of it because I've always been a person who, it's yeah. like my old mum. She she's a person. She's a lovely person, but she lives in the past. She just loves history. I am always yeah, been a person yeah. who sort of looks look to the future, and I, and it's it's funny how. You know, so she would say, "Well, the, the, the history is more important because it's really happened." And my perspective is, "Well, I know it's really happened, and it's good that it's happened, but we know it's happened. You don't know what's going to happen in the future, and that yeah. is to me was what appeals to me in science fiction. Because yes, it's fiction; mm -hmm. it's not real. We don't know what's going to be. A lot of it's going to be wrong, but a lot of elements in science fiction are." are based on things which do happen eventually in some form just not yeah, exactly how it's so, depicted so. and I think that's going back to Tron how in that aspect it was spot on and I absolutely I, 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 I feel sorry for Tron because the first one came out so many decades earlier that nobody really got it mm. and then when we finally got a sequel the market had been so saturated by that concept yep. twice it just got hammered out of existence Yet, yet, to, yet, in 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 like science fiction terms, both movies are looked at as being something rather amazing. But they never got the, they never got the standing for what they should have been. I've one I've too early and, and one saturated. I've got a question for you. How would you feel if they made a contemporary Tron TV series, a big budget, expensive <laughs> series? They did. They did. Yeah. What proper actually was Tron? They made the Tron series, yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! I never heard of that. Yeah. Okay, yes, they made you can't have done very well. I think it might have been more. That's so it. No, it was a cartoon series set oh. before the second movie. There was another threat. Okay. What about a live action yeah, though? Yeah, I mean, I've seen some yeah. of it. I think it's on YouTube. Some of it. They've spent a lot of money on this because when okay. they made Tron Two, there were like side projects. Oh, they did sort of like yeah, like they did one with the, the Matrix as well, didn't they? Yeah, but the, I think they made either sixty or twenty-two episodes of a, a CGI oh. cartoon series. So what's it like then? Is it? Is it I mean, uh, I'm not into. A I have only seen one or two of them. I caught them on YouTube, and they were fun. they were awful. I you can swear. <laughs> No, yeah, it was just terrible. I tried, I thought, oh, this looks interesting. Mm. And I couldn't get into it. I'm like you, I'm in and out with animation. I really find it hard to watch animation yeah, stuff. Yes, so I couldn't get into it. But that, uh, that I suppose that's it. It's set between the first and second film. Okay, that sounds interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a bit weird. But do you think then, going back to uh, my suggestion, if they made a proper new live action version of Tron, I would yeah. love to watch that. I would definitely watch that. I think a ten-part TV series would definitely work. Like a TV movie, or yeah, TV working. series, or something. Yeah, I've got to say. But the same problem with Tron. You say poor Tron, and I do feel for Tron. It's beautiful. It's art. It's Tron. Yeah. 
But what they're going to do in the third one? I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty basic, isn't it? It's going to be about the So program. it would have to Coming be a remake. Coming into our worlds, isn't it? That's what, oh, there's something new that's independent and then it's a threat. I mean, what what can it go down? I mean, what's it? Oh, we get something up its ass when it's a merger between us and them and the evolution. I mean, you could, they're the free paths you can go with it. Where do you go with it? Where would you take well, it? Well, I, I think they'd have to do a remake, do the original one again. Really? Then, well, I think so. Uh, I, although, I, although I think that I would prefer to see a sequel, I would have thought that to in, get people in, what they could do is do a remake of the original movie and then maybe use elements of the second movie and maybe then proceed from those two original movies into uh, its own direction. You're fascinated, but I wouldn't have thought of that. I wouldn't have thought of that. You totally caught me off guard. That. All right, is that, is that a good thing or a bad no, thing? No, no, it's a good thing because I, I like in my head, I've got a like got your own perspective. Either the TV think. series or the third movie mm. sort of maps out where they could go with it. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought about a total reboot. I don't know if a reboot would work though, would it? I, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't normally work. I just that's just what came to my mind. I don't know why it just did. You say the probably you say it were like it were like Matrix Four, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I like the Matrix Four. It was all right. I didn't dislike it. Was it was all right, but it wasn't like it wasn't we all like, sat there with yeah. like excitement for it, and it wasn't quite. Um, yeah, expecting something like the first or last one, and it, well, it was all right. I'm not knocking it. No, I don't dislike it, but, but it was they the didn't weaker. do anything different with it, did they? There were nothing different with it at all. But they did it, try some different things. The way that the, I mean, like Nero. I, I need to see it again. I like the fourth one. No, I do. I'm but not I, I, but it's not I, I just film. no, no. But I something about it that's not quite the same as the others. I, I know what yeah. you mean, but I can't quite put my finger on it. But it, it, again, it's like the Trump thing, isn't it? Maybe Matrix had its time back in the nineties. You know, yeah, that's where it, it belongs. Be. And it when they be. brought that back twenty odd years later, it, it were like, yeah, all right. Because I, I suppose we knew we were going to get the big special effects extravaganza. We got that, but the story. I mean, the story was pretty lame, wasn't it? Really. Wasn't you know, and so, but what I'm trying to say is, it's like if they're going to do Tron three, yeah. they're going to have to do some original because if they don't, the Tron's just going to go the same way as the other two. But it would be I mean, hard for them. Lights. But it would be hard for them to do it original because of, as you say, they've saturated the market with similar based films and TV shows. So it'd be very yeah. hard for it to have its own unique ident when it initially the the first one instigated a lot of this stuff in the first place. Yeah, but it took him nearly, don't forget as well, it took him nearly 40 years to make a sequel. Yes, it Trump. did. It did, it was a long time. 40 years. I mean, they could have made the sequel. I mean, if Tron had been made at the same time as The Matrix with them type of effects. Oh, that would have been interesting, uh, wouldn't it? Uh, Tron, would have, been, yeah. Tron yeah. would have been like The Matrix of today. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, well, I thought you said, and that, yeah. And that, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, uh, the problem with Tron, it's not the story. It, it, it just got released at the wrong time. First time, it, nobody... Yeah, but I think we've sort of worked that out as we discussed this today. I kind of we've kind of yeah. realised, and then the over saturation. Well. Yeah, it's kind of the wrong end, <laughs> and now it's the other end. So it's well, that's around. what I mean. If I if <sighs> I said to you, how many films have you seen in the cyberverse? You you I bet you could quote off about twenty thirty movies over the last twenty years. Oh, there's a yeah, lot. there's that many. You know, the try. The, I know they go at it with different, and you get one or two that are good, like Lawn Mower Man. And then we got mm, the same. Lawn Mower Man was clever. I never saw the sequel to that. I don't bother. No, no, I like the original yeah, one. Yeah, it's bad. Okay, it's bad. that one. I mean, Max Headroom, I mean, that came Max out. Headroom's another example. That was genius. That was AI, genius. An AI <laughs> yeah. thing moving around. It. Yes, it was, yeah. It, 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 I mean, it was there. I mean, every now and again out of this cyber, you do get that unique touch. Mm. But Tron should have, it should have been everything in that, not just where it is. It should have been the whole bloody concept of mm. it all and, mm -hmm. it, and it never did it no and, and it's such a shame because i love tron i mean it's one of the best films ever made all right so let's wrap this up what would you give tron out of 10 i think you're gonna give it a high score i'm gonna give it an eight. Oh, okay i thought it'd be higher than that okay give it eight i'd like okay. i don't know it, it, it's not fair though is it, it it's 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 not fair because it, it, because the situation it, time it's hard one it's a hard them. one yes and that's his problem no fuck it I'm, I'm gonna be now I'm gonna give it a 10 I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> I thought that's what you're gonna give yeah I just thought it, it's unfair to give it an 8 because 
it, it's not the marketing or whatever it wasn't its fault it, it was a piece of genius that was released too early yeah i i think i'll give it i'm going to be in between your two scores i'll give it a nine i really liked it i think yeah, I that, that um that really i i think that uh, as you say once again i mean obviously it looks dated now but that's not its fault it was made a long time ago but it was so groundbreaking i like the characters yeah. i like the ideas um and it's a very solid uh, initial, original idea which really did shape a lot of modern science fiction so it's a nine from me so that's a pretty good score that's a pretty score so that's pretty good yeah Marty thank you very much for reviewing that it's been a really interesting we've had a good discussion about some some contemporary shows and movies and um, and how it went and I, I'm really glad that you appreciated like I did just that it was something special something unique yeah, but we need to get back to the classics the cat from outer space this is what we need to get back send me a text when we're done I'll oh, forget that bloody thing I'm oh. Now listen, we're going to finish off now. Um, now next we're going to do this 80s version of The War of the Worlds because I love the 1953 movie and it didn't have much to do with the 1953 movie but I'd love to get that. Uh, I, I, I know the season one very well. Season two I can't remember so well but, but I'll talk about that. It's a really good one. Um, so that's about it. So this, this week I'm going to end with a very short, very interesting interview with John Pertwee interviewing William Shatner done a long time ago and when John Pertwee talks about Doctor Who to William Shatner you can tell that William Shatner hasn't got a clue what Doctor Who is which is quite amusing so I think this is worth a share Marcy thank you very much really good week uh, for discussion this week thank you so much we'll catch you next week on the Solo One Sci-Fi Podcast live long and live long and prosper that'll be £10 please Gov there you go thanks Isleworth Middlesex Final Frontier my mission, to go by satellite to the Bridge of Enterprise. To seek out and interview Captain James T. Kirk. To boldly go where no ex-Time Lord had gone before. None, sir. It's amazing our paths haven't crossed before. We both started fighting intergalactic evil 30 years ago. Me and my TARDIS, him on his starship. I'd heard of him, but would he have heard of me? Doctor Who has been around for 30 years? Yes. That's why I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> I, I knew that. <laughs> um, tell me, how do you feel about the cult status that we both enjoy? Well, I feel rather good about it. Um, it's uh, cult uh, has an ominous uh, tone to the word, but uh, in our case, it, it means uh, people um, uh, communicate their uh, their caring and love for the shows that we're in. Um, on a very personal basis and so they 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 meet and talk and 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 they're less and less furtive about it we've both moved on to other projects Wurzel Gummidge for me and there's a whole Shatner season on Sky all they ever want to talk about are the roles that made us famous does that worry him I don't think that the Captain Kirk character has intruded that much um, when I was filming TJ Hooker for example before it went on the air, uh, when the people would gather around the film crew on the streets, uh, they would say, uh, oh, uh, that's the guy that played Captain Kirk. The next day, after the premiere of T.J. Hooker, people were saying, oh, there's the guy that played T.J. Hooker. It's as ephemeral as that. <laughs> there's another parallel. I handed over to a new doctor 20 years ago. Kirk, too, has stepped down in favor of a new generation. And in the new Star Trek movie, Kirk boldly goes for good. Is it really the end for Captain Kirk? I believe it is, John. I believe that this is the, uh, the last of uh, uh, time I will appear as Captain Kirk. Much to my regret, I'm in the midst of filming the, the movie right now. I came off the soundstage uh, late last night, and I'm off for a few weeks... Uh, while the uh, next generation cast uh, goes to work and then I come back uh, and I left the bridge uh, of the Enterprise uh, with a great deal of sadness that was my last time there I, I don't have any question about that Doctor Who may be Steven Spielberg's next big project he, the, uh, really? Story. Uh -huh. how would you like to play the lead role? because <laughs> he won't offer it to me <laughs> right well I I think perhaps I could play it don't you? I think you could. Think I... Yes, I think you could. Right. William Shatner 
As Doctor Who? Well, there's a thought. Well, there's only one thing for me to say after all that. Beam me up, Scotty!